Hi, welcome to our house. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. If you haven't seen us before, my name is Jonathan. I'm Ashton. And together with our son Jack, we are the Black Forest family. So the last time we actually updated you guys on the progress on our house, it was all the way back in October. And like yeah. Forever ago. I know, so we're sorry we haven't really been keeping you in the loop, but I guess it's just sort of felt like for the past seven-ish months, a lot of like little things have happened, nothing to really warrant its own video, but Very I think- Very slowly little things have happened. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like we have enough now to where we can finally give you the final house build update because actually I think the next time we talk to you about our house, we'll hopefully, yeah. good gracious, hopefully, well, yeah, hopefully, hopefully yeah. be in it. So I think actually right now too, because we will actually be moving in about six weeks from our apartment here in Freiburg to our new home, um, I think we can now properly give you the closing video on all of the lessons that we've learned from building a house in Germany. Such as everything that we would have done differently from the good to the bad. Yeah, so without further ado, let's dive right in with our very first lesson learned. Okay, so lesson number one is expect the unexpected. The last time we talked to you about our house, we shared with you that they actually gave us a range for our move-in date, anytime from June 1st to August 1st, because, well, with COVID and the pandemic, they just really weren't sure when they could guarantee that we'd be moving into our new house. Yeah, it wasn't really clear to them if they would have any delays to this, and they did. Yeah, it turns in out it was true. <laughs> in December, we received an email from the builder saying they had to stop all operations on the house because they had a COVID outbreak on the job site and followed that up with Christmas, New Year's, yeah. December, nothing happened. Yeah, basically we lost an entire month's worth of work. And unfortunately, well, the unexpected continued to show up. I'm sure everyone who's watching this video is well aware of the war in Ukraine. And while what's happening there is far and away a much more difficult thing to go through, it is interesting to see how something that's happening thousands of miles away from here is actually affecting our house build. Yeah, the supply chain is yeah. struggling a bit. Yeah, so specifically, um, it's not so much sourcing items from Ukraine, but rather actually sourcing materials from Russia. And Germany has put some sanctions on Russia, and it means specifically for our house that they're having a hard time getting steel. Um, they haven't told us specifically, but we're pretty sure they're having trouble getting either the railings for the balconies and like around our terrace or the garage door and the garage door track. Yeah, I wonder if that's steel or aluminum. I'm not sure. Either way, yeah. it's it's causing a delay in the house. We were hoping to move in in May and it's been pushed back a month, essentially. Yeah, they said June 20th. Yeah, Tentatively. And actually that brings up another good point too, because we say tentatively, because actually they wrote in an email that 
This is not a binding date. They no. will let us know the binding date 14 days before this date. Which so. makes it incredibly difficult to plan. I'm sure many of you who have moved, you have to organize movers. You have to organize an inspector. You have to buy furniture. Mm. That furniture has to be delivered. You have to organize your kitchen installer. You have to organize having your internet put in. You have to have a glass enclosure for your bathroom put in. All of this stuff has to be done after you get the keys for your house. And it's kind of a gamble of when do you want to have them come. Right. And, and on top of all of that, we still have things to do here in this apartment. Yeah. We need to have parts of the floors refinished. We need to have them come in and repaint. All things considered, hopefully June 20th, we'll keep you posted. But yeah, we're going <sighs> to... Expect the unexpected? A little cliche, but kind of, yeah. If anything could happen still. All right, so this brings us on to lesson two. Communication is key unless there is too much of it. In the United States, we have something called telephone. Basically, you'll whisper something into somebody's ear. They talk to another person and so on and so on. And that last person on this row of people has a completely different story than the first person did. And yeah. we've learned actually in Germany, this is something that's also a common, game. but it's called yeah. uh, Stille Post. And we think it's actually pretty fitting. Yeah, actually, so in the October update video, we warned you, there, there's a little bit of foreshadowing that this in fact could happen. We were worried that we were really having to go through just literally four different groups of people to just finally get an Anga boat for our wishes, specifically the bathroom fixtures with the sink faucets and the shower heads and the new sink and the, the cabinets and all of that. Um, Basically, they came back and it was way out of our budget. It was around 4,000 euros and yeah, there's a better uh, place to spend four grand yeah, at this we can, point. We could have done it all in the future ourselves. So, I mean, we're not going to pay that up front now. We'll mm. just take the stock items and move on. Yeah, move it on. Yeah. Yeah. So we communicated that with the appropriate person. We said, yeah, I think we're going to pass. We'll just keep with the standard items. Well, the game of telephone, telephoned. And uh, needless to say, the subcontractor never got the message and they ordered the expensive items and installed the expensive items in our house. So we just showed up to the job site one day. Yeah, you I, did. I rode my bike. I went for a bike ride and I just kind of popped my head in to see how they were doing. I go into the bathroom like that looks really nice. That looks too nice. This is not what we ordered. <laughs> no. I sent it to Ashton. She's like, that's wrong. And now on the one hand, you might be thinking, wow, that's like a really like nice thing like it would be great but unfortunately we were basically faced with this decision where um they wouldn't give it to us for free they still had enough time to literally rip everything out and reinstall it but they were also facing the tough decision because many of the items they installed have different mounting points from the standard items and they already drilled into the tile and installed everything yeah so, so it was a huge mess um yeah, so we, but anyway, we went back and forth with a subcontractor. He knew we weren't going to pay full price for it, no. but we, he knew also what his cost was to get the original items in, pull everything out, pay to have the tile replaced, drill into it again for the new fixtures. Anyway, basically, we ended up just agreeing to take it for half, roughly, of what yeah. the original price was. Which um, which it's, is actually close to the price we thought we were going to pay when we picked all of this out. Yeah, so. I mean, also, I mean, it's pretty fair, I think. I mean, the price, obviously, it's a little bit more than we wanted to pay, but we did price out cabinets for the original fixtures, and the cabinets already were a 1,000 euros. So it's a little bit more. Everything's installed. It's tied to our contract. If we have any problems with it in the future, we know who to call to fix it. It's not on us. So yeah. anyway, we just took it. Yeah. So... I guess like at the end of the day, it still kind of worked out for us, but if there was any sort of reflection on the whole house building process, I think that would still probably be our chief complaint that there are just so many different people that messages have to get approved by and passed through. Yeah, and we don't see any of it. We just send one email out and we cross our fingers it was done correctly. No communication do we ever see. No, which is good, but it's also bad because yeah, this happens. This happens. Exactly. But you know, actually, that is a really nice transition to the third lesson that we learned, which is that sometimes things actually do work out in your favor. So again, in sort of a game of telephone slash miscommunication, um, we actually had the wrong hardwood floors installed through our entire house. Um, but in our case, it ended up being a happy accident. 
So this was another situation where we went in, we wanted an upgrade to the floor, specifically this gorgeous oak floor that's manufactured in the Black Forest, a nice wide plank. It was just beautiful. Um, but, you know, we, we saw the bill at the end of the day and it was... Yeah, that was like 6,000 euros or something. Really yeah. expensive. And again, like the cost at this point were also starting to add up in other areas of the build. And we thought, you know, there was a wood floor that was included in the price that we actually liked too. And maybe... we got to choose the color that we wanted of the <laughs> yeah. stock floor at no extra charge. So that's what we did. Yeah. So we just ended up saying again, you know, thank you, but no, thank you. We'll just stick with the standard. Well, when Jonathan went to visit the house, he also sent me these like pictures from his phone. Like, yeah, like um, this is not right. Which was a big surprise because again, I showed up on a bike ride. All the floors were covered in felt because they were getting ready to paint. And I just pulled one up. I'm like, this looks like the floors in our apartment which is the special Sonderwunsch that we wanted, yeah. which is the high-end floors. Like, this isn't right. I mean, they're beautiful, but again, like we didn't want to get stuck footing the bill for this mistake. No. So panicked, we like wrote emails. We're like, oh my God, what's happened with the floor? Like, this isn't what we ordered. This is going to delay is everything. If you have to rip these out and yes, replace them back. It, yeah, exactly. Well, it turns out the floor that we had actually selected the second time around, when we went back to the standard option, um, it was out of stock. So the flooring company was just being nice and they just installed our dream floor for free. They yeah. weren't going to charge us for it, which is like mind blowing. Like it was 6,000 euros yeah. for this upgrade. And right after we sent these emails panicking, you guys installed the wrong floors. They came back to us like, what are you talking about? This was actually supposed to happen. They were probably assuming we were okay with it because it was our Sandra Boone show, and it special was, request. And it was no extra charge. And it was no extra charge. But like the <clears> only <throat> thing that bothers us is we designed a kitchen. We went furniture shopping. And when you're doing all of this stuff together, you want to make sure everything matches. Yeah. I realize it's a really high level complaint. Sure. But like, sure. what if we ordered all of this stuff and like these floors no longer match all this other stuff that we had to go yeah. out and buy? Thankfully, we don't have that problem. Um, but it is still, I mean, the was, principle of it. Like, I, It's I, just I, weird that they never talked to us. They could have easily just sent us an email saying, by the way, you're getting the nice floors. Yeah. Congratulations. And and we would have probably emailed them saying, oh my God, thank you so much. That's amazing. We've won the Rather lottery. than yeah. say, sending them an email being like, you guys just screwed up our house. I mean, we didn't, we didn't say it like that, but we were clearly panicked. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah, say yeah, the yeah. least. No, but that worked out completely. That was actually one of the main reasons why we accepted to pay extra for the bathroom because we essentially just got 10,000 euros of upgrades for half of what the original bathroom, bathroom price was. So, you know, although the bathroom is more than we wanted, we put it all together, you know, take, Count take, your blessings. take my money. Just Count we'll your call blessings, it a day. call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So this brings us on to lesson four. Sometimes it's better to leave things to the professionals. Yeah. So we shared with you in just a couple of lessons prior that we ended up getting all of these bathroom items for half cost. Well, prior to us realizing that was happening, we had kind of made the decision that, well, you know, we can easily change out a faucet or a shower head, maybe even the cabinetry. We'll just order it ourselves later on and do the installation. Maybe that would be one way to cut costs because I mean, how hard could it be just to install a bathroom cabinet? Well, it turns out actually quite, quite hard. Yeah, so we actually went to go and visit our house and they were trying to have us, you know, tell them where we want to have everything mounted on the wall, like the toilet roll holder, the towel holder and all of that. And they actually ended up drilling into the tile to hang the cabinets up and they cracked the tile. I mean, you'd think it's probably pretty easy to, you know, drill into tile and hang something up. But well, it happens, though. It happens, oh. of course. And for me, like, you know, a lot of the stuff we wanted to do ourselves, I mean, we can do it ourselves. I consider myself to be pretty handy, but Murphy's Law applies to me on almost everything that I do. <laughs> if whatever, you're not familiar with what that is, when something goes... Whatever I mean, can go whatever wrong. Whatever can go wrong will. Will go wrong. So if I were right. to drill under the wall, I mean, the tile might be okay, but the whole wall might come collapsing down behind <laughs> I it. I don't think that would have happened. <laughs> But 
But anyway, this but, brings up the, the point of what we mentioned earlier is you want to have the professionals do it. Again, it's all tied into your contract. Mm -hmm. Any issues that happen with what things they install, you know who to contact. It's under warranty. You know, it's all good to go. Well, and you know it's done right. <laughs> well, and so specifically in this case, essentially what happened was when they cracked the tile, it's actually their responsibility now to fix the tile and yeah. then remount the cabinet. So in this case, we're going to have the tile completely removed and a new yeah. one put in. So it will look brand new without any flaws. Yeah. Whereas if we hung the cabinet We'd and to, we cracked the tile. We have to go and source the exact same tile and caulking. And, uh, and, and hire another professional company. Or honestly, we probably just would have lived with it. But <laughs> in this case. <laughs> That's probably possible. It'll be one of those things. We'll fix that soon. N it never gets never fixed. Never gets fixed. No. no. All right. So I think we should move on to lesson five. And that's measure twice, cut once. Words that Jonathan is probably eating at this point in time. Yeah, so I had this grand plan, my dream of hanging the TV, sound bar, floating shelf, all on the wall, no visible cables. Yeah, hiding all the cables in the wall with like special yeah. housing. Exactly, so we had the special request that they would put this channel into the wall, they'd put the holes in where everything needed to go. The problem here is we had to confirm this basically a year ago. In August. In August, mm -hmm. and we had a rough idea of our furniture layout in the living room, which was basically the same as what the floor plan was, which we thought at the time was as good as you can lay out a couch and TV and everything. And then we went furniture shopping about two months ago and bought a couch that's much different than this one we imagined we were getting because we found a much better way to optimize the small room that we have. The problem now, the TV, is not centered on the wall. No, it's off it's, to the left. It's off to the left. The couch and the chair They're require centered. basically a perfect centered TV. So now we have these holes in the wall. Holes in a concrete wall, by the way. This With isn't the channel like, that's cut in. This isn't like drywall where it's easy to patch yeah, and is, move. This is it, a German house. This isn't an American house. This is a, this is a concrete <laughs> wall that, yeah. Yeah, on a structural wall anyway. So yeah, so now we're kind of in a predicament of are we okay with the TV being offset or are we just gonna like leave the hole there, move the TV and just kind of help nobody notices the Well, or maybe if like, if the TV but can cover the hole still. If it's it's a, the TV shifted. I'm not worried about, the shelf I'm not worried about, the sound bar I am worried about because most of the sound bar cables have to be perfect as they yeah. enter into the wall and now it's gonna be kind of shifted. So I needed to do more research to see if this is something that we could deal with. But yeah, I, it's I was very <sighs> proud of the sketch I made. I gave them dimensions where everything's gonna go. My dreams were coming true. <laughs> and now um, I need to find a solution to <laughs> And I feel like, again, I, I almost feel like I need to just like give like some context to all of this. Like the TV and sound system, like that's really Jonathan's thing. Like this was your part of the house that you were like, I, dreaming about so I, I do my feel bad yeah. that we kind of have this little bit of a hiccup it's I'm sure it'll be fine but um we'll figure it out yeah, yeah I guess it's just one of those things though that you know the timelines of all of these things they don't always match up no. very well like the fact that we had to make this decision in August like why would we go out and buy brand new furniture a year before we could potentially move in like of course we were going to wait to purchase those items the length of planning you have to go to have everything dialed from the beginning. Maybe that's something we've definitely learned here and we should have done better. Yeah, we at, should have done better. But it is what it is. We'll figure it out. No yeah. big deal. You live, you learn. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's time to move on now to lesson six. Mountain-sized views sometimes equal mountain-sized problems. Yeah, so in that October video, many of you commented on the exposed rock face rock wall that was in our backyard and asking what was going to happen with that. Well, actually quite a, quite a lot has happened with that. Um, our house is actually like terraced into the side, literally of a mountain um, in the valley that we're in, in the Black Forest, which again, brings beautiful views, but there's a lot of earthwork and retaining walls that have to be put in to make it work. Now. One of the things that I would say that when Jonathan and I were shopping for this house that wasn't necessarily our favorite was how close the retaining wall yeah. was 
to our house. It's it's, it's right there. It's a small alley behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, interestingly enough, we actually just today got off a phone call with one of our new neighbors who were talking to other neighbors that there's been a few changes in the design of this retaining wall that actually have some pretty significant consequences for our backyard. Um, specifically, they've actually changed slightly the way that they're constructing this retaining wall. It's now not simply just stones to help hold back the like rain and any sort of like land shifting that would happen. They're actually putting in a concrete reinforced with rebar wall yeah. against this rock face and then installing these massive granite blocks that they're building up like three meters high yeah. to hold back this wall. And all of that construction inevitably means that it's inching that wall closer and closer to our house because that wall is getting thicker and thicker. And essentially we went from having a backyard that was like, I think approximately 2.2 meters thick before you got to the wall. With an integrated bench. With an yeah. integrated bench and planters. Yeah. Um, the first, the first sign of trouble was an email that we got a few months ago where they were saying, yeah, like these integrated planters, we'd plan for them to be a meter deep. Maybe we're going to cut them in a little bit to give you some more space. And yeah, we were like, really kind of like uh, we're dancing like, yeah, around fine. the problem here. And yes. So, you know, really, this is kind of one of the problems we have. We're not Germans. We're not perfect German speakers. And this is one of those cases where it's pretty easy to take advantage of us where you have a lot of other people that are probably going to push back, like you're consuming my yard that's, you know, in our contract that we agreed to. And now it's smaller than it was. And we're just like, I would love to argue. I don't know how to argue this one. <laughs> well, so the, the other thing that's worth mentioning here, too, is that about a month ago, they actually approached us again and said, you know, you were supposed to have 2.2 meters of space before you got to the wall. Um, it's looking now like it's probably going to be closer to 1.7 and that's not yeah. a lot of space. It's not enough space for you to really put a table out there. No. So instead they offered us the option to actually shift part of the patio to the side of our house that we could actually build it out a little bit more and have room for like a grill and a table. The consequence of that is we did lose some grass, but I think actually in the end, I like it better. I think having the like table on that side of the house, it gets more sun well, in the morning. I think it'll be nice. We were planning on already building out a patio a little bit in this area because we wanted to have some more sun exposure and we wanted to put the grill out there. Yeah. We want to eat outside in the evenings in the summertime and now it's done for us. So mm -hmm. problem solved thanks to the developer. And again, it's done by professionals and it's all warrantied. It's all on them when things go wrong. But I have but, to say, like, today we went and saw them building the wall. It's pretty substantial. It's huge. And yeah. actually, I think the aesthetic of those giant granite stones is going to end up being quite beautiful yeah. because we have plans to, you know, put some really lovely, like, grasses in these planters, like the tall ones, and then maybe even illuminate the walls yeah. so that when you're sitting in our house at night looking out, it's, it's not like... Because it's all It can look really, really nice for I, some good lighting. I think so. And, yeah. you know, I don't want it to look like this big foreboding, like... It's a giant stone wall. wall that's like <laughs> right outside window. your window. So yeah. I think we can do something to make it look yeah, nice. Yeah, I mean, it is a bit of a bummer. We're losing a little bit of that backyard space, um, but we'll make it work. I think so. And you know, the other thing too, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> you can't fight nature. And in this case, like the mountain demanded a more substantial wall. So yeah. a substantial wall is what it will get. Yeah. Okay guys, so before we wrap up this video, I actually, there's like a bunch of things that I feel like are worth discussing and bringing up and showing you, um, but they didn't really fit into any one of the previous categories. So this is just sort of some general reflections on our house that uh, maybe you guys can even give us some inspiration and feedback on. Uh, like for example, the Technic room in our house <laughs> is incredible it's so cool like it's probably one of my favorite rooms in the house because of how professional and how commercial it looks it is so well laid out but but the problem i have here i mean i'm a mechanical engineer like i, I want to know how things work and i look at all of this and i have a general idea of what everything is doing but i, I like there are some things here i'm like i have no clue no i don't like 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 I, like the systems that control our house are so just astronomically different from the systems that yeah. control a home in the United States that like, 
I'm not, like, I don't even know what this thing does. I, I hope we have somebody that will at least run us through how everything works or give me like a giant oh, instruction please. manual because if there's an emergency or something goes wrong in the house, I would like to just fix it myself. Or, or at least know how to like- Cut the water off somewhere right. myself in case something- At least to go shut wrong. it off in the, in the case of an emergency at the bare minimum. Yeah, but right now I'm just gonna somebody. go turn every single lever because I don't really understand how everything works. I'm sure yeah. I could stare at it for a while and start figuring it out, but I, um, it's-, we, it's um, There's a lot. It's intimidating. To say the least. Yeah. Okay, actually, so I think the next thing that's worth also bringing up in this section is we would love to get your feedback on some ideas for our entryway. Um, we have a thought that we're kind of moving forward with. There are these really neat sort of Scandinavian looking in acoustical panels that you can buy at some of the local hardware stores here and install on the wall. It's now strangely trolling um, us on Facebook. Yes, their ads, <laughs> yes, the big brother is watching, but we wanna put these in the entryway specifically because the shape of the room lends itself to being extremely echoey. It's very tall, narrow, hard surfaces everywhere, including tile the on tile the floor. floor. Yeah. So we want to do something that's aesthetically pleasing, but also, yeah, noise reducing. So if you have any suggestions or recommendations, please let us know down in the comment section of this video. <laughs> We'd love to hear them and get some extra ideas. All right, guys. So that pretty much summarizes all the big lessons that we've learned from building a house in Germany. So whether you're just somebody who needed to have their thirst quenched on an update for how our experience is going, or maybe if you're somebody who's in the process of building or thinking about starting the process of building a home in Germany, we hope that on some level this video could be helpful for you. Yeah, and hopefully yes. we will be moving into our new house six weeks from, I guess, the filming of this video. Today. Today, yeah. Really, really quick. Yeah. Again, we're only going to maybe have around two weeks notice. So we've got a lot of scheduling and probably rescheduling uh, uh, to no, do in the next few weeks. No rescheduling. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. But, you know, we also should probably answer the final question, though, which is, would we do it all over again? Would you do it all over again? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, all of like those hard lessons, there are much worse things that could have happened than like our special requests getting put into our house by, by mistake. By accident? Yeah, yeah, I don't think we can complain about that. No, no. that's really and, in our favor. I mean, yeah. And the build quality of our house, like that's something I've been just continuously yeah. impressed by. I mean, we, we do need to hire an inspector to go through our house, mm -hmm. but having talked to our neighbors who have done this already, they the houses were given very high marks, very, very, very well done. So we're yeah. pretty confident moving in here that it's gonna be exactly what we agreed to and what we paid for. Yeah, and I think it's gonna be a great place to, you know, raise Jack and live for a really long time. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this next yeah, chapter. A place that we can really call home. Yeah. So as always guys, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So, until next time. Ciao. Cheers. It's very exciting because like it's our last house update. Maybe the next one we do, we are in our house. I know. Well, God, knock on wood or something because like, ooh, there's another delay. We lost an entire month's work of worth. Oh, yeah. oh let me say blah, 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 Worth blah, of worth. I don't know what I was saying. Work of worth. Yeah. I don't know what that yeah. is. All right, so this brings us on to part two. Lesson two. Oh, this brings us on to section two. Lesson two. So this brings us on to part four. Lesson four. It's not part, part six. Part six. It's lesson six. See, if you made it part, I would have not made any mistakes this whole time. I know, but watch, but then like in the next video, everything will be named part, and you're gonna start being like lesson four. Yeah, because this is what you've engraved into my- I know, I know. And you know, in the United States, we have something called telephone. Telephone is basically, you just have a cup to your ear, so there's a string. Oh, no, I gave you two. <laughs> gave you just gave me those no, descriptions. No, it's when you whisper something in somebody's ear. And well, then, then why did you done. put the cup on I don't on know, my... I got confused. There's too many games.